Hi. As you can see, I have a petrol generator. This is a like a generic type generator. Although it's got a brand, you'll find that many brands around the world stick their stickers on here. But ultimately, the inner workings of this generic type generator are similar. Now, the problem with this generator is the output voltage is way above the rated voltage. There you can see in this country, it should be AC 220 volts. So alternating current at 220 volts or thereabout. Look, if it's 230 or 210, it's still fine in terms of a generator so what the problem is is that this particular one is way above 300 volts so that is unsafe for your devices inside your house they're not going to last if you give such a high voltage okay there you can see the generator in the on position look at that voltage it's actually off the dial over 300 volts now there is a way to uh, to fine tune the voltage but in this case this uh, regulator is shot the regulator is stuffed so i'm going to show you how to change the regulator all right if you look at the back the, where the motor is there's actually a regulator inside here and i'm just opening it And in my case, it was actually loose. Uh, so these screws that actually come off. Um, anyway, here is the regulator. If in your case you find that the problem isn't as extreme as the way I've shown you here, maybe the voltage has drifted a bit instead of being 230, maybe it's 238 on idle, then there is a potential meter here which you can fine tune almost like a calibration point. But in my case, as I've shown you, this is a complete failure, uh, over 300 volts. You cannot calibrate that just with a potential meter. I have a blown regulator. But if you look closely here, you can actually see a burn mark on this uh, what probably is some sort of regulator chip maybe it's a IGBT or FET I'm not sure but anyway I can see it's burned this most probably popped this regulator so I've gone and got a new one I've matched the power output five kilowatts so now all I have to do is swap them you can see that it's almost a plug-and-play device look at that so I've unplugged this just like that unplug that and on my one it's got terminals so I'm just gonna cut them I've cut these two wires, even though the terminals are there. And the reason why is because the new regulator comes with a plug. And as you can see, I've disconnected these as well because the new plug does not fit over the old plug. So it's a little bit different. Obviously, uh, the company who sold this is, is uh, been asked to uh, make it specifically for their own generator. So it's a little bit tricky. So I'm going to retrofit it and you're going to see that in the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is swap the plug. I'm going to take the plug from the old regulator and put it with a new regulator. So all I'm doing is I'm just pressing this little tab there, little uh, lip, and you depress it down and the conductor will fall out. And you've got to do that four times. So just press on the little tab and the conductor falls out. Right, so now I can reuse this connector because this connector will fit on the old connector. There you can see. All right, so it seems like the blue blue will uh, link up with the blue blue. So I'm going to put those in now. Blue and the blue. Right, so these are going to seat here. Now, if you find that they're not staying in nicely, you just need to lift this tab a bit. There's a little tab there. So I'm just going to push it through a bit there. You can see there and this one over here. I'm just going to push it through a bit. Okay, so I'm solved for blue, blue. So that's that one and that one. You can actually hear it clicking in there. That's one there. Okay, so there you can see blue, 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 blue. So here you can see I've rewired the connector. Now my color coding was a bit different to the uh, original. You can see I've put white to white, but red to green. Just having a look at another replacement. This is a picture I got online. And as you can see, this one is closer to the original regulator, which I took out. You can see it's also got the terminals. Um, but if just having a look at the color coding, you can see green, white, blue, blue. 
Now, I'm not sure if the green and white are interchangeable, i.e. can you swap them around? So I just did look at another. So I did find another picture in here. You can see it's got blue, blue, yellow, yellow. So that gives me the idea that they are interchangeable. But as you can see, you may source a regulator and it's got different color coding and it may also have a different connector. You might have to just wire it, rewire it yourself. Right, you can get one of these regulators on Amazon and just having a look at the one that's available on Amazon, this is a similar a kilowatts, you know, 5.5 and so forth. You can have a look at the color coding there. Uh, again, quite similar. So maybe an expert can comment on the uh, color coding of these wires. All right, just had a look at some uh, generic uh, diagrams for generators. And here you can see the brushes. And I think that's where those two wires go, the uh, red and white. Um, and then you can get these online and this can also help you to figure out uh, the layout of your regulator and what it's doing. So you can see here how the uh, two wires is probably connected to the uh, one winding. You know, I did do a resistance measurement and you can see the resistance is very low. So it's obviously the windings on the motor. Uh, you can see here, here's a, a winding. Um, you can see here, here's also a winding. And this happens to be a three phase setup though. Now I'm just doing a resistance uh, measurement between these two wires and you can see the blue that's obviously one uh, winding and then the green and the white uh, that's an, obviously another winding giving that's obviously another very low resistance 0.2 ohms there. Alright so I've cut these ones and I've joined them onto the new regulator. Now you can uh, solder these that's what I'm going to do. And uh, if you want, if you don't have a soldering iron, you could use a terminal block. Uh, you could even you could crimp them, and then just use a crimper. I'm just going to use a soldering iron. Okay, so there I've soldered it. And I've just put a bit of heat shrink here just to uh, protect it because it does get a bit warm. I can just uh, tighten these a little bit. It's gotten a bit loose over time. And if you want, you can even file these a bit just to clean them. Uh, this is not too bad. Right. Now the polarity of these terminals is quite important. So if you look closely on mine, there was a little sign there. It says actually a negative. So the white is on the negative and the red is on the positive. So just make sure you get the polarity correct. Now in terms of these wires, I've put the blue blue, matching it to the blue blue, and there is the green and white. All right, so you just make some space here and you put this in. If you want to, you could put some Loctite on here. I noticed one of these bolts was already loose when I opened it and I think there's a lot of vibration here. All right, there's a grommet here which fits over here. Just make sure there's nothing that's going to get caught when you put the uh, cover on. You don't want to uh, cut through any of these wires. So I'm just going to bend this nicely. Okay, so I've switched on the generator. You can see there. Uh, it's working 230 odd to almost 240 volts. I'm not going to do some tests. I'm going to plug in a kettle and see how the regulator is operating. So I'm going to put in an extension cord. I'm going to plug in the extension cord and I'm going to measure it using my meter. Right, so here you can see this setup. I've got a kettle. I've got a little uh, a handy meter. And uh, you can see there the output voltage is 231. Uh, just showing you the waveform. Look, it's got quite a bit of uh, noise on it. Uh, that's the nature of these type of uh, generic type generators. Look at the frequency, it's quite sad. It's 53 hertz, but when I switch on the kettle, you can see it does bring closer to 
uh, 50, 51 hertz. Switch off the kettle. So you can see there's the kettle on the right hand side. And you can see me, I'm going to switch it on and you can see how the waveform changes. Not quite a sine wave, but uh, it's good enough for hardy appliances. But you can see the voltage is regulated. You see now when you switch on and off the kettle, that, that voltage would normally dip. But because the regulator is uh, performing its function, you can see how the voltage remains constant. So even when I load up the generator, this is a 2.2 kilowatt kettle and you can see the regulators working. The reason why I'm doing these tests is, is just really to show you uh, some of the outputs of the regulator. Just be careful of uh, these generators. They don't quite give you the correct frequency. This generator should give you 50 hertz because that's what its rated output is. But you can see that uh, you know, between 50 and 54 hertz it does uh, deviate quite a bit. Um, this is a little bit of a problem, especially for motors. Uh, some appliances don't like the drift in frequency, so just be aware of that. But uh, there you can see the, um, the duty cycle is still quite good. Well, it's actually very good at 5%, but keeping in mind that the frequency is not quite where it should be, the 50 hertz. Maybe in your country it's 60 hertz, but you'll find it's a similar problem. Uh, it won't be quite on the mark of the 60, but when you load the generator, uh, it's quite good. I mean, look at that, uh, the, the period when it's uh, off uh, with no load, it's like 18,8. But when you load it, it gets quite close to the 20 milliseconds. So that means that the generator performs better when it's loaded. All right, so there you go. Overall, the repair is successful. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And now you can see the output of your generator on the little uh, scope screen there. Thanks for watching. Cheers.